Hey everybody and welcome to Wilcom E4. My name is Sue and I am from OML Embroidery and we're going to start on this journey to learn E4. So I'm going to start with a few uh, quick tips, tutorials, that sort of thing to so we know what all of these millions of gorgeous buttons do and then we're going to move on to classes and projects and stuff. So if you're experienced with E4 just bear with us, consider it maybe a review, share it with people who are just starting out but I want to start at the beginning and work my way up so let's go over the screen first of all I want to um, open something or just even do a new one so let's do new and you can see look at all these buttons wow it, it could be a little confusing straight up but we're gonna go over uh, what they're called and where they are it's it's the decoration windows so this is where everything goes now because this is the commercial program basically everything that you see can be changed you can move stuff around and I'm going to show you how to do that you can bring in more of these shortcut icons which is kind of cool you can pin the dockers which are here on the right hand side so you can totally personalize it um, what I'm doing right now, this is I'm working actually on a Mac, um, a MacBook Pro, and I'm on the Windows side. I boot camped it, and this is how Wilcom E4 comes out of the box. So when you install it, and make sure you follow the instructions clearly, when you install it, this is what you're going to have. The only thing I haven't done is over here is I haven't uh, installed the Corel graphics. So... We'll do that later when we get into it because that is also a huge part of this program is having access to Corel graphics and how you can use it. And we're going to actually go into that quite a bit because if you're not using that part, you are missing out on a whole bunch of um, easy things and way to create fantastic embroidery. So we're going to brush up on our Corel skills um, at, on some later videos. For now, let's just introduce you. You, welcome to Wilcom E4. So everybody, this is E4. This is what it looks like. Wow, isn't it something? I know there's a button for everything. I'm going to suggest straight up that you, because there's so many things in E4, you can literally do anything. There's no limits on the software, it seems. You can tell that I love it and I use it every day. But I'm gonna suggest that you guys get a shortcut keyboard. Um, if you don't know what that is, check out one of my videos and it just makes all of this a little less overwhelming because you can put in, you can program in the shortcuts for everything. So if you don't have enough room because you run out of button room really quickly, you don't have to worry about it because you can have your, um, you can have them in your keyboard so you don't have to have them up here. I've seen people using E4 and they have every single one of them out so they have them at the top they have them at the sides they have them at the bottom they have all of these pinned and you end up with like a teeny tiny square to work in and you should have as much desk space unless you have one of those really cool wide monitors you need as much room to fiddle around with as possible so you have the ones that you use hide the ones that you don't use or use the keyboard shortcuts or better yet get the keypad then you can have a nice clear working space okay that being said let's go over the parts now all of these little icons are up here and this is called the menu bar and that everything's up there everything they're in pull down menus they're in different spots every function that you have now i have nothing up so a lot of these are grayed out but you can do everything from here you can pull up new ones from here you can do everything so this is your standard stuff they just set it up for us it's your standard two ball toolbar so your save design the shortcut is control s super handy to put in your keyboard because uh then you don't have to remember you don't have to do control s you just you know click on number 10 i use it all the time i also have the automatic um saving set up for five minutes you'd be surprised how much digitizing you can do in five minutes so uh we can go over that if anybody wants it um but for now we're just gonna scoot along on everything export to machine i'm gonna show you guys how to set it up uh to export to your machine without saving 
a stitch file. So literally you can send an EMB file to your machine. Um, so you only have one actual, the editable one on your computer. You don't have to have tons and tons of copies of it. And not that your machine will understand EMB, but if you set it up properly, it is going to convert it along the way. And it just saves tons of time and tons of mix up and tons of space on your computer if you only have the EMB files, which you can access and edit super quickly so you don't have to worry about it. So, okay, we got that basic stuff. This is to import embroidery. So that would be your EMB file. You can also import a stitch file but remember don't edit them too much this is the button that you use to import graphics this is the design properties which is also on this side so it's going to I don't have anything up but it's going to show you all of the information on your design now if you're just starting with e4 i'd suggest starting to fill all these in because you know if you're working on a design for a customer and you go back you know in in five years you go ahead and they're like well i want that original one you can have this all filed away nice and tidy it'll show you the design all the information about it all the information about your order um, which is absolutely fantastic. And you can add in your thread colors and different colorways. Super fantastic. You know exactly the name of the threads that you used five years ago. So I would suggest everyone to set up your design properties on your EMB files. It'll be super handy in the future. It might take a minute or two right now, but it'll be super handy in the future. Now I exited out of that because I don't use it. I'm not going to be using it here and plus I know it's up here by the way if you wanted to move any of these around because you're gonna get to personalizing everything yourself you can just see where this is a dotted line here you can move them around and they flip and you can add more rows you can drag it I'm just left click and I'm still dragging it see how it can go here there's three rows and you can do it on the bottom so if this is something that you use often enough you put it where you find it convenient another thing I'd like to point out this is um, all your threads you can add anything colorways are really cool we can learn about that all these things we're going to go through later so color object list that is probably now I pin that one because I use it all the time so color object list and I'm going to click the little pin right there so it doesn't auto hide and that stays up so if I am designing something let's just grab something oh I need to turn that off too wow let's do that hit enter, hit enter again, and one more time. So now I have the color and it tells me, you know, it's a tatami stitch. Let's go in there right now and let's do that because wow, that's an annoying noise. Look, there's your dockers, um, which are on the side. You can add different ones. Um, carving, clip art, color object list, which is the one I'm using, colorway editor, design properties, which I exited out and got rid of, my threads, object properties, overview window, some people might find that pretty handy, and teammates, if you have that option, it's absolutely fantastic. And here's all your toolbars too. So if these are the toolbars, so if you are doing bling and you want that up, you just put a check mark. If there's something there that you are not using you can oh I like the arranged tools there and that's going up on the bottom I really like that one because it has some of my favorite things so it's just simply checking and unchecking okay moving on let's uh this over here on the left is called the toolbox so you can add some of these uh tools uh, groupings I guess you'd call them into your toolbox or like the one I just added it'll go down to the bottom but if you don't like that left click drag it and you can uh, put it right into your toolbox I happen to like it underneath for no reason that just I'm just kind of used to it you could also float it if you let go I'm still holding on to it if you float it you can uh, float it around and move it around I uh, I don't prefer that because they kind of disappear and go away let's put it right there for now and then let go and slide it over before or after so you can have fun setting it up how you want again you don't necessarily have to have them 
all out. There's graphic ones. Here are the graphic ones, which are pretty cool. You can scroll down and see some basic shapes and then you just then convert them to embroidery. So that's kind of nice. I kind of like that. That's how to make an ellipse and how to make a square. So, you know, basic stuff there. These are all the outlining stuff. Um, and the auto digitizing, which is okay. Of course, it's probably top of the line for auto digitizing. Personally, I prefer manually digitizing and I will be showing as we go on, the weeks go on for this one, I'll be showing you guys how to do it. Then you'll understand that. Um, a lot of different things, making holes. These are special um, star designs. Let me show you this one. I know I didn't take it off and hit enter and there you go. Isn't that cool? Really pretty. Now, I also wanted to point out to you guys down at the bottom here, this is showing you, this is where all of your information is. So I want you guys to look, it tells you how many stitches, um, total stitches, and it tells you what it is. Zigzag, you see if I click here, it goes to satin. Let's turn on our true, true view, which is here. That's how I like to work. I didn't realize that was in satin, but hey, that's okay. Uh, satin raised, zigzag. So once you click on something, you can see a whole bunch of other things come up. But what I wanted to point out, when you are creating something, now this is going to beep again, I want you to look, I don't even have to do it, I want you to look, it says enter point one on boundary. So if you guys ever get lost, because it is such a big program, if you ever get lost, you look down here and it'll give you instructions. It'll tell you how many clicks you need and then finish it up. And it says enter point six. So I entered it, that's all I want. Enter it, enter and enter. And there you go. And that's how easy it is. So make sure to refer down there so you don't get lost anywhere. So stitch types, it's all up here. You just kind of have to go through. Now, all you have to do is hover over, hover over and it's gonna tell you, show applique fabric and settings. Well, you know that if you click it, it's gonna show it or not show it. If you right click it, it's gonna bring it up. This is where I was talking about the autosave and this is actually where my uh, noise is. So I take off auto scroll because I don't like it. Um, it's super handy though. I just find I move too fast and I it goes out of whack. So I prefer to do it. Yes, I sit and I click the buttons to um, move every everything. So show bitmaps. I would leave everything like that. TrueView is on. That was up here. Applique fabrics. We don't need any bling because I won't be doing that. I don't have anything like that on my machine. Grids. Change your grids to whatever you want. I'm just leaving it. Um, auto scrolling is off. Reshape. Um, generate stitches immediately. I prefer that. Reshape behavior. I like the Bezier curve so it has different arrows on it so you can um, move stuff. This is your knife. So how knife manages fragments. It's going to reorder and create travel lines. It's going to reorder and no travels or it's going to create a branch. So whatever you prefer on that. Kiosk is another thing that we can talk about later. I've never actually used it because I don't have a store. Um, export design properties automatically if you want that. Um, warnings, you can um, design integ integrity alert. I kind of leave that one on. Um, object property, center at current stitch. Yeah, these are all just things. Oh, you need to set up your hoops. Make sure you do that. I'm going to do a video next time on setting up hoops. So we'll go over that. And then we're back to general. And I, I actually didn't go all, through all these. So let me do that right now. So object properties, apply changes immediately. I really like that. Or you can use the apply button. Closest join, that's going to move your start and stop points automatically. And this is the one play button sounds. I personally do not like the button sounds. You might. It kind of makes a different noise for a... Uh, you know, um, a straight point or a curved one, I find it way too distracting. So to each your own on that. Crosshair, I love the crosshair. Um, it helps you set up things and line up things, and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, insert embroidery file, so add to your palette or match to your palette. I just 
put add to it. It depends what I'm going to do on this computer. Um, presets and everything show tool names and show large icons. So if you want, uh, I have a pretty small computer here, but if you're on like uh, I have a big Cintiq, you want large icons, that's where you click. So let's change a color. I'll show you how quick and easy that is. You just select, you have to have it selected. Now mine is outlined in pink and that's just simply how I'm used to seeing it. I guess you could change it if you wanted to. Um, but all you do is select it and click. And if you notice up here in our color object list, everything changed as well. So then you can tell it has a nice little icon. The graphics are great. You can tell what stitch form it is. So, it, I mean, it's easy to figure out. And here you go, different uh, stitches there. So you can tell at a glance. And this is why I keep the color object list open because it's easy to figure out. Okay, so that's going to be all for this time. I know that was a whirlwind introduction, kind of lets you see everything that we're doing. Please comment with a smiley face if you guys want more videos like this. And if you want me to keep going with E4, as I said at the beginning, we are going to get more complicated. I'm just starting at the beginning and we're going to go through as much as possible. We're going to have classes, we're going to have projects, and we're go we are going to do some Corel draw stuff. So bear with me on that. Don't forget to like this video, comment with a smiley face just to let me know you guys want more videos just like this on E4. And don't forget to subscribe to, to the channel as well. If you know anybody that's struggling with E4 or even anybody who's working with E4, this is going to be a fun journey and I hope you guys join me. Until then, I will stitch you guys later. Bye-bye.